Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is October 18th, and right now we are looking at the infrared satellite imagery. You can clearly see the atmospheric river pointed at Vancouver Island. You can see the storm system out here. It's got lightning strikes associated with this cold air cumulus, helping to steer this atmospheric river into Vancouver Island. Did bring a bit of rainfall to some of the Puget Sound there yesterday also. Probably a bit more than I had considered, but it is looking like it's clearing up quite nicely, or Seattle southbound anyway. But still, that heavy rain continues for southwest BC and Vancouver Island. And some very impressive precipitation amounts, and this is going to continue on through at least today and probably on through tomorrow for a bit as well. And then we're going to bring down some colder air here through the extended forecast. But for the next couple of days as well, Seattle and Portland are going to get quite nice here. It's going to be a sharp cutoff here between that cloud shield and some nicer weather to the south and some very heavy precipitation to the north here. So interesting atmospheric river feature. Then we'll dive into those things as we go through the video here today. You can see uh, Oregon coastline extreme sneaker wave threat and Portland mentioned this as well. You guys know the deal out there. These kill people every year. So heads up. It doesn't take uh, that big of a sneaker wave to get you. Just a couple feet of that fast flowing sneaker wave water can knock you down and pull you out into the ocean there. So watch out if you're on the jetties, rocks and logs. And if you're out on the beach there, have an escape route. Taking a look here, this is the Portland one here, talking about that sneaker wave potential as we go on in through today. And watch out, especially if you have children or pets out there also. Now, taking a look here, this is for Montana and North Central Idaho. The big change is coming, and this is likely to be felt across much of the Pacific Northwest. There's still some model disagreement on just how cold this change is going to get here, but I'll show you what I mean here in a bit. This is the cooler next week here, shown by the National Weather Service, Spokane. Chilly Valley rain, some mountain smell, and then some widespread frost here. And this was issued this morning here. Look at it, Seattle yesterday, actually six hundredths of an inch of rain, a little bit more than what I thought we were going to get here. I thought we were going to clear a little bit better there, but it wasn't too crazy. I'll show you some of the amounts across Vancouver Island, definitely much heavier amounts. And check this out back in 1949, one, two, three, four, five straight days of record low temperatures here for October. And it's kind of interesting here because October 1949 was a few months before the coldest month on record ever for Seattle of 19. 50, where we just had some incredible snowfalls. So it shows that maybe is there some kind of link between a cold October and a cooler January or a colder January? Who knows? I'll have to look into that at some point someday. But kind of interesting stuff there, looking at those record lows back in 1949. Kind of unusual to see a string of five straight days like that. Now, taking a look at the cocoa rise here across some of Vancouver Island, there is some pretty heavy precipitation that's been occurring. You can see some areas are up over three inches in the last 24 plus hours and, and vastly less here across a lot of the Puget Sound. So sharp cut off there with that precipitation gradient. This is looking a little bit closer here on the observations here. And if it will show up, it, it'll show that some areas have been getting over four inches, probably higher amounts locally in this region as well. And we've got more on the way, potentially four plus inches or more for some of these regions here. And you can see across some of Southwest BC, I don't know if this is an error or not, seven inches, but the, uh, the three inches is probably very accurate. And you can see the sharp cut off there as you move down across some of the Vancouver BC area. Area, pretty sharp cutoff, in, in fact, right across some of the metro area. And as you go down towards western Washington, uh, far less amounts. Now, this is looking at total precipitation in inches in the NAM 3 cam hot off the presses high resolution model. And you can see as we go through the day to day, look at some of these precipitation totals just continuing to blast into Vancouver Island. Some of it clipping some of the northwest Washington coastline as well. But look at Bellingham, a hundredth of an inch versus the higher terrain just outside of the Vancouver metro. You're talking three, four inches pl plus additional on what's already fallen and then maybe some of this will sag down across the area as we go through the Saturday, uh, Thursday time frame here on in through Friday morning. More on that here in a bit. This is looking at the European total precipitation in inches last night's run. And you can clearly see that just amazingly sharp cutoff there right almost on the Canadian Washington border from Vancouver Island, Southwest BC is that atmospheric river just bringing some huge amounts of precip out there. Uh, this is looking at 500 millibars here, 18,000 feet. This is the temperature. And you can kind of see the ridge that's built across some of the West Coast here and the cooler air streaming north of us. But then we start to get this pattern change here and you see the colder air start to arrive with the initial trough. And then another potentially colder trough will drop down from the north. But there is some model disagreement. You see the European just clips Western Washington here and the GFS has kind of been back and forth. So we've got some model disagreement here. How far is this going to carve out over the ocean here? and just how cold will it get across the region. Still good questions and things we need to address here over the next couple of days. This is the European. I wanted to show this uh, one more time here. And this kind of shows you that precipitation amount that cuts off there. And then 
then the next system starts to arrive here as we go through at some point on Sunday. You can see it moving on to the west coast there. And then eventually another system arriving with that batch of colder air after that, which we'll be looking at here as we go. This is looking at 500 mil bars according to the European. There's that ridge. So we're going to get a couple of nice days coming up here today and tomorrow. Not too bad across Seattle and Portland. Warming up quite nicely. You might get some nice lenticular cloud action again across the Cascades, depending on where you are. And then the next trough starts arriving here as we go on in through the early portion of next week with potentially another one dropping down. And I'll show you the GFS starting now. This is hot off the presses, the 12Z run. There's our ridge. Some nice weather for western Washington, western Oregon today. Big atmospheric river into British Columbia. Put that into motion here and you can see the next system start to arrive kind of out of the west there. And look at the GFS kind of changing its mind here a little bit. You know, the GFS was the one showing this kind of just clipping the Pacific Northwest yesterday, and now it's kind of opening that trough up a bit better here across western Washington. This would bring much colder air into the region. We'd be talking about mountain snowfall across the Rockies and the Cascades, the Blue Mountains and whatnot in British Columbia. It's a big ridge building all the way up through Alaska. Pretty good agreement in that, but just how far east will this ridge build here is going to make all the difference in what kind of trough forms over the Pacific Northwest and their inner mountain west for that matter. Now looking at total snow Kuchera ratio in inches, again off the GFS, it's hot off the presses here. We're going to scroll forward here and then you'll clearly see this. I mean, look at some of these snowfall totals showing up for the Cascades of Washington, Oregon, Northern Cascades here off through British Columbia. Look at the Rocky Mountains, nice early season snowstorm here, according to the 12Z GFS, bringing some nice snowfall amounts all the way down into California and Nevada even here. But we got to take this with a grain of salt. This is going to depend highly, as I mentioned, on just how this trough of evolves in the forecast. Look at the daily two meter max temperature. Check it out today. Nice temperatures here once you get out of BC. You see the sharp cutoff in some of these temperatures here with that cloud shield and the atmospheric river into southwest BC and much warmer to the south of that here. Look at some of Portland you know, maybe mid-70s there, upper 70s possible for some of the Willamette Valley, maybe even some 80s for eastern Oregon here. As we scroll through here again, another very warm day tomorrow. And then a little bit of a cool down starts here as that next system approaches from the west. And then potentially much colder air starts to arrive as we go through the following week here. But again, some pretty good model disagreement on how that's going to unfold. But take a look at this. If the 12Z GFS is right, look at the two meter temperature anomaly. We're still above average here. And watch this. We stay above average all the way into the weekend here. But then you can clearly see by the time we move into the early portion of next week, look at some of these temperatures, how far below normal we go. Places like Montana and Alberta and BC, heck, even Washington, Oregon, California as well. Potentially much below average here. But again, a, a slight change in the track of this trough here is going to dramatically change just how cold we get here across the West. So some interesting things to look at here, uh, especially over the next couple of days. And just kind of showing you guys uh, uh, some of the mountains here across uh, Idaho. You can see the Bitterroot, part of the Rocky Mountains here, Salmon River, Sawtooth, Seven Devils out there as well. And you can kind of see the valley there in Idaho. But th this weather is m much higher confidence across portions of Idaho and Montana, Yellowstone, Wyoming for bringing some very cold early season air and some pretty significant snowfall totals as well. And this would include eastern British Columbia and Alberta here. So heads up. You can also see I brought up a one of uh, Oregon there too. You can see Klamath, Coastal Range, Cascades, Blue Mountains out there also. So yeah, just kind of a little terrain 101 here for you, Pacific Northwest for you. But look at the six to 10 day temperature outlook, October 17th issued yesterday. You can see much of the Pacific Northwest is included right now, but of course this is subject to change. Still some pretty good model disagreement on how this is going to unfold. So tomorrow I th think will tell us a lot about what is to come. Here's the six to 10 day precipitation outlook and you can see the sharp cutoff here potentially on where this trough sets up as we go through October 23rd through 27th. Here's the 8 to 14 day continued below average for much of the West, including places like Montana, Wyoming, Idaho, all the way through the end of the month. And then we start to show a little bit of below normal precipitation uh, on through the end of October here for some of the Pacific Northwest. But take that with a grain of salt at this range. Anyway, yeah, interesting stuff here with that atmospheric river. And I don't know what happened here with the GOES-18, but you can see it dropped off the coastal uh, barriers there in the outline. But anyway, you can see that atmospheric river continues to just pummel Vancouver Island. I mean, hopefully the flooding isn't too bad up there, but some very impressive precipitation amounts. And it might be a nice lenticular show across some of the Cascades of Oregon, Washington. I think I mentioned that already. But yeah, get out there, get your cameras out. And again, watch out on the coastline there. Sneaker wave activity could be high. And those sneaker waves can 
be especially uh, you know deceptive out there and they can really surprise you and pull you out into the ocean so watch out for your pets and your young children out there do not turn your back on the water but anyway um i'll, I'll probably leave the link down here to the bottom left if you guys are wondering where the california videos have gone they were on the california weather watch page by themselves that channel's doing quite well hopefully you guys can be a part of that and subscribe there as well and I'll be doing a giveaway for that channel here to try to get things kicked off. So the first member of that channel will be getting a giveaway prize here. And I'll be shipping that out probably here in the next few days as the channel gets up and running. But anyway, um, hope you guys are liking these videos. Uh, fun forecast to watch. I can't wait till the 12Z Euro comes in because I really want to see if it's backing off on the trough coming down across the area or if it's just going to clip the Pacific Northwest or just how this is what the trajectory is going to take off of British Columbia. So fun stuff to watch over the next couple of days. Possible early season major cool down here across much of the region so anyway um yeah we'll do this again tomorrow into in the regular briefing i may go out there and try to catch some uh sneaker waves or some lenticular clouds i still haven't decided yet but anyway um yeah click like and subscribe and i will talk to you guys again tomorrow